Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is pretty straightforward. I am benchmarking the new KB Lake processors. Not just one, but two, the top two SKUs that have just launched the uh, 7600K, which is a quad core without hyper threading, and the 7700K, which is a quad core with hyper threading. I'm going to be comparing them to de their direct counterparts on the Skylake side, so the 6600K and 6700K. I have six benchmark sets I'm gonna run through. Three of them are more CPU workload focused, and three of them are more gaming focused. So let's start by going over the test bed that I'm using right here to test this all out on. And this has been done in an open air environment um, for the sake of expediency. The motherboard I'm using is the Gigabyte Aorus Z270X Gaming 7, brand new motherboard from Gigabyte. They're now doing Aorus motherboards. Uh, the memory is Corsair Vengeance 2x8 gig kit. I'm just running it at stock 2133 speed for the tests. For the graphics card, I have a Gigabyte GTX 1080 Extreme Gaming. Uh, this one is manufacturer overclocked, but I'm just leaving it at the standard settings as it came out of the box from Gigabyte. For a CPU cooler, since these CPUs don't ship with one, I'm using an Aramax ETS T40B. Uh, this one is nice because it has a fixed backplate once it's on there, so it made it easier for me to remove it to swap the CPUs out as I was going along. I also wanted something that was a decent CPU cooler. You can get this one for about $35 to $50, depending on where you find the price. Although it is a little bit more difficult to find now, but uh, Enermax does have an updated version that's um, roughly the same. I also should point out that I'm not using the stock fan that came on that cooler. I'm using a Scythe Gentle Typhoon, which is a PWM optimized cooler. For storage, I have a Kingston HyperX 240 gig SSD. And for power, I have a Rosewell 1000 watt A plus platinum power supply. Those are all of the stuff that's in there, and uh, let's quickly go over the specs for the four CPUs that I'm going to be testing. I'll place them up side by side here so you can compare, and you will find they're largely the same, especially if you're looking at the ones that are in the same series. So the 6600K is four cores, four threads, uh, and then the turbo frequency goes up to 3.9 gigahertz. That's supposed to be just on one core, but I found that on all of these, I don't know if it's a motherboard or just some special magic that I have in me, but they were all just running at their max turbo frequency across all the cores, so go figure. But um, pay attention to the frequencies though, because that's the main differentiating factor between these CPUs. The 7600K, the new uh, KB Lake version of the 6600K, turbos up to 4.2 gigahertz. So even though everything else is roughly the same across the specs, uh, it is gonna be running at 300 megahertz faster out of the box, and that is on all four cores, or at least it was during my testing. Uh, also voltage for the 7600K, just for those of you who uh, are testing these out new right now, uh, was running out of the box at 1.296 volts, about 1.3, a little bit higher than I was expecting. Actually, all of the CPUs on this board were running at a little bit higher voltage than I thought they would, but fortunately most of them were okay, except the 7700K. More on that in just a second though. The 6700K uh, is a four core, eight thread CPU. Uh, again, all the specs here you should be familiar with if you've been looking at Skylake processors at all the past year, year and a half. 4.2 gigahertz turbo on this one. As compared to the 7700K, four cores, eight threads, 4.5 gigahertz turbo. And I think that's the main selling point of this particular CPU right now. 4.5 gigahertz out of the box. And again, it was doing that on all four cores. Um, although when I first installed it, it was running at 1.416 volts, um, which is a lot, uh, more than I would expect at least for just a CPU out of the box. And it was running pretty hot at that voltage too. So um, even though that was, was what it defaulted to, I manually punched in a minus 0.125 volt offset resulting in a about 1.34 volt max voltage um, under full load while stress testing. Typical uh, gaming load, it was running at about 1.3 volts, which I found was a little bit more normal, but I did want to point that out since that was a change that I made as opposed to everything else, which was running pretty much at stock frequencies. But I did want to point that out since it's a change I made uh, different from what it was running at stock out of the box. Let's move into our benchmarks now, starting with Cinebench R15 running on all cores, so as many threads were available to the CPU as the CPU has. The 7600K scored 681, 7700K with its eight threads scored 970. 6600K, 630, and 6700K, 906. So this is kind of what you would expect. It's giving you that, you know, five to 10-ish percent performance jump going from the 6000 series of Skylake processors up to the 7000 series KB Lake processors. Moving it over to single core mode, that gives you a better idea of instructions per clock, uh, at least sort of a vague idea of instructions per clock. 7600K here scored 180, 7700K scored 194, then the 6600K and 6700K scored close to those numbers, but again, just a little bit less. 
which is again kind of what we'd expect for a the iterative changes that Intel's been giving us with the generation to generation uh, launches. CPU mark is part of the past mark suite, but specifically it has the CPU. Overall scores are listed here, uh, 7700K and 6700K scoring up around 12,000 uh, with again the 7700K and 7600K outperforming by somewhere in the 5 to 10% range, depending on how accurately you do your math. CPU Mark has a single core test as well, and here I want to point out the similarity between the 7600K and the 6700K, scoring within five points of each other. Uh, bear in mind that those are the t two CPUs that are running the single core at the same frequency of 4.2 gigahertz. So, food for thought for later on. Let's move on to Adobe Media Encoder. Uh, this is a CS6 version and it is rendering a 4K video that's uh, about 6 minutes and 50 seconds long. Uh, for the 7600K it took 27 minutes, 7700K took 23 minutes, 6600K took about 28 minutes, and uh, the 6700K took about 24 minutes. Again, uh, we're seeing differences here that uh, fall in line with what we'd expect given that the 7700K and 6700K have four more threads to work with and of course the other differences can mainly be uh, explained by looking at those clock speeds. Let's move over to the gaming benchmarks though, starting off with 3D Mark Firestrike Extreme, which runs GPU intensive workloads as well as some physics tests that gives us more of an idea of the CPU's performance. Now the graphics performance across all these tests should be pretty much the same since I'm using the same GPU with no changes. 7600K scored 9740 overall. Take a look at that physics score of 9387 and you can compare that to the physics scores of the other CPUs such as the 7700K scoring 14300, the 6600K scoring 8700, and the 6700K scoring 10226. And uh, again, if you're looking at those combined tests or the overall tests, you'll find that they even out a lot more. It's mainly looking at that physics test that's gonna give you the difference um, because that is primarily where the CPU is going to make a difference with this particular benchmark. Time Spy is a DirectX 12 test and again has some uh, tests that integrate the CPU a lot more. In fact, they have a CPU specific test. So again here overall we're not going to see a huge variance. They're all within about two, three, four hundred points of each other. Uh, again, that's largely due to the fact that it's using the same GTX 1080 uh, GPU. But with that CPU test we can see the performance again fall it's pretty much the same kind of layout that we saw with all of the other tests. And if you're not noticing the trend here already, the trend is that if you look at the frequencies, that will kind of tell you what the uh, performance is going to be. And this is also why, don't worry, I decided to overclock as well. Um, and I'll be coming to those tests in a minute. But first, GTA 5. This is using my standard tests with maximum settings. Running at 1920 by 1080, so it puts a little bit more of the load on the CPU as opposed to the GPU. And again here, we saw a little bit better performance from the 7700K and 6700K, um, but everything was pretty much within line. That 6600K came in last with the score of 129 average frames per second. Finally, we have Civilization VI, also DirectX 12 test, using max settings running at 1920 by 1080. Uh, I ran both the graphics test as well as the turn average turn time test. Now the turn time is the one that I actually thought was going to show more of a difference here because that is the one that's supposed to be more determined by the uh, performance of the CPU as far as how quickly the CPU can process the AI and what it wants to do uh, next when it's looking at the layout of all, all the map and everything that's there. But not a huge difference here. And in fact, saw some uh, surprising upsets here with the 6700K uh, coming in with the lowest turn time of 22 seconds, whereas the uh, 6600K uh, upended it with 21.95 seconds there and then actually coming in first was the 7600k with the time of 20.66 seconds so probably some stuff remains to be seen as far as how multi-threaded the uh, civ 6 ai test is because i'm not 100 percent sure but there you go there's some game tests as well now before i move into some overclocking and some clock speed specific tests because that's really what it came down to for me was these all seem what they should be, but I'm not really, I feel like I'm not seeing apples to apples unless all of the processors are running at the same frequency. Here are some temperature and power draw numbers. Please take these with a grain of salt. Uh, the ambient temperature here in my garage was about 21 degrees Celsius during testing. Fortunately, it stayed that way because it's kind of winter here in California. And uh, max power draws for the entire system measured from the wall and it didn't really vary that much. Efficiency uh, between the quad core with hyper threading or without 
seems to stay relatively the same. But let's move on to the tests that I think you guys have been waiting for the most. These are the overclocking tests, and uh, I'm only gonna be showing comparisons for a couple of the benchmarks because honestly, I did not have that much time, and CES is about to happen. I clocked all the CPUs to 4.6 gigahertz, 4.6. So that's a very slight overclock for the 7700K, just from 4.5 to 4.6, whereas the other CPUs that are running down at like 3.8, 3.9, got more of a boost. But this was to give a better idea of straight uh, uh, instructions per clock performance from CPU to CPU. Let's start with Cinebench R15 running across all cores, and we see equalization. Yes, the 7600K and 6600K scoring almost identical the same with the 7700K and 6700K. Uh, I will say that the KB Lake processors are ever so slightly faster, at least in these tests, so I guess we can give them that, but that's pretty much within margin of error. Looking at the single core results, we see the same thing. Not more than a three or four point difference between all of the processors, and that's running on the single core on all the processors, so that's taking any advantages that hyper-threading or multiple cores might give them. CPU Mark, again, showed just a leveling off of everything when everything's running at the same frequency, 10,600 and 10,800 respectively for the 7600K and 6600K. So the 6600K here actually outperformed the 7600K at the same frequency. Um, but again, that's still within margin of error for these tests, so if I ran it bunches and bunches of times, I have a feeling they pretty much even out to where they're supposed to be. And again, only about a 15 point difference between the 7700K and 6700K. Again, with the Skylake processor winning out, but just, just, just barely. You, you couldn't even really call that a win if you're um, accounting for variances in testing. So I guess, I don't know. I like. I kind of saw it coming when I when I was doing the initial test, and I was like, I bet these are gonna do the exact same performance if they run at the claim, same clock speed. So, in conclusion, clock speed seems to be providing the greatest amount of performance variation between the Skylake and KB Lake processors. But those differences between the processors, especially if you're looking at single threaded performance, pretty much disappear when you equalize the clock speeds which you can easily do with these processors because they're all K SKUs. Now, with the 7700K, you are at least getting a, a chip that guaranteed can run at 4.5 gigahertz. So I guess there's something to be said about that. But most 6700Ks that I've worked with can do that fairly easily as well. There also doesn't seem to be a whole lot of IPC improvement, instructions per clock improvement, if any at all, over Skylake. So if the question you're asking yourself is, I'm on Skylake now, should I upgrade to KB Lake? It doesn't seem like you really need to. Overclocking expectations, performance, uh, reliability still remains to be seen with these processors. I've only worked with two of them. We need a much wider sample size, so there's going to be a bunch of the other people also posting their results right now, as well as a big overclocking event that uh, Intel is hosting at CES uh, with HardwareBot, where they're going to be doing a bunch more overclocking. So that's something that maybe could be said for KB Lake, but we just don't know yet. So it still remains to be seen whether once lots of people start overclocking these processors, if the average overclocks with KB Lake processors might be better than with Skylake, who knows? It might be the same, it might even be worse, but we're gonna need to wait uh, probably at least a week or two for lots more people to start posting their results to get a better idea of that. So to sum up, I wanted to point out that usually going from one generation of CPU to the next with Intel, you expect to see maybe a five to 15% performance improvement on an instructions per clock level for that new generation, but KB Lake just doesn't really seem to have that. That leaves the other stuff to be your main motivations to upgrade, like new motherboard features, and there are a few of those that I talked about in my uh, first five things you need to know about KB Lake video. You should uh, click on that, it's linked. Um, but also there's those tiered features that they're blocking people out of, like support for Optane or 4K streaming, um, which honestly feels more like they're purposely locked. It's like it's like that you need to have Windows 10 to run DirectX 12, you know? It's like, they don't have to do that. They're just doing that to force people onto the new platform or into buying new stuff. Honestly though, what I really wanna see is what kind of pricing changes or other shakeups happen in the CPU marketplace when Ryzen goes on sale. AMD's promised competitor for Intel, which is supposed to happen in Q1, but apparently not quite yet. That's all for this video though guys. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Uh, you can also share this video with other people if you know anyone who's interested in KB Lake and particularly some KB Lake benchmarks because 
Lord knows these took a decent amount of time and uh, your feedback and likes and all that good stuff always helps. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think of this launch and what exciting uh, hardware you're excited about having launched in 2017. I've talked enough for this video already. <laughs> Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.